Hi, I've clicked onto today's tropical tidbit for Thursday, August 27, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, here's Erica moving into the northeastern Caribbean today, continuing to move toward the west-northwest. Unfortunately, a bit of a disaster last night for Dominica as a mesoscale convective system developed on the eastern side of Erica, sitting over the islands for most of last night and this morning, dumping over 13 inches of rain at the Dominica airport, and reports of uh, people missing damage to homes and strong uh, big flooding damage uh, on the island. And this is showcasing why uh, even a weak tropical storm can have uh, very strong impacts. And even in hurricanes, flooding can be a bigger threat than the wind in terms of damage and threat to lives and property. So our hearts go out to Dominica tonight, uh, flooding remaining a threat for most of the islands in here as Erica continues toward the west-northwest, and especially Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic with lots of mountainous terrain can really uh, generate heavier rainfalls as that upslope flow causes more condensation and more rain to fall. And uh, the center of Erica is now expected to move more in line with the island of Puerto Rico and closer to Hispaniola than previously thought because all that convection last night over the islands really uh, changed the low-level structure, low level structure of the system and uh, reformed a new center. Uh, originally, the old center was going to pass to the north of Puerto Rico today. That old center actually got ejected out of the circulation, the remnants of it, over the Virgin Islands right now. A brand new center can be seen that formed earlier this morning to the south inside the Caribbean, and so the track made it look like it had a little bit of a dip southwest, and now will likely resume a west-northwest course, but at a, a little bit of a more southerly position. And this puts it more in the line of Puerto Rico, and uh, flooding will be the primary threat there. Uh, but the, a big uh, item for uh, Erica's organization today is the fact that it's let, uh, let itself catch up with itself, essentially. The old wave within which Erica was embedded is now right here. You can see the wind switch from southeast to northeast, north of Puerto Rico. This is where the storm was supposed to be today, just north of Puerto Rico, where this wave axis is. Uh, but it's really let the wave outrun it, and in the process, Erica has uh, slowed down and allowed the low-level center to become a little bit closer to where the mid-level center is in all of this convection. It's not quite vertically stacked yet, but it's a step closer than it was yesterday, and this is an important event in Erica's life because when vertical stacking finally occurs, then the storm will likely begin to strengthen properly as a tropical cyclone and could make a run at hurricane intensity later on in its life. But first it has to get by, the mountains of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. And this is a big, uh, big issue with the short-term forecast and a big uncertainty. This is the current NHC track, taking it very close to both islands over the next couple of days. More like this here. Let me draw that line correctly. Uh, tropical storm warnings out for the coast and the islands here. North side of the Dominican Republic expecting a lot of rain and a tropical storm force winds are possible. Uh, but the mountainous terrain of Hispaniola can destroy tropical storms with great ease, and it remains to be seen whether Erica will even survive this passage, although a lot of models show this uh, doing just fine and strengthening later in the forecast. Uh, this still has a chance to dissipate if it interacts too much with the mountains, at which point it would just drift west as a remnant, um, but it remains to be seen over the next couple of days. So this throws a big wrench in the rest of the forecast, for Erica, but there are a few things that we have fair confidence in. Uh, what we do know is that this track through day three is pretty set. R no matter what strength Erica is, whether it's uh, destroyed by Hispaniola or strengthens after moving beyond it, uh, we expect the storm to be somewhere in the Bahamas or in the near Andros Island on approach toward Florida by day three. That's Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. That part of the track is fairly confident, but it's beyond that that it reaches a fork in the road. Uh, there's, you know, a lot of questions that can be asked here. Can Erica make it into the eastern gulf and make a run at the gulf coast? The answer is yes, but only if the storm is weak. That's currently what the consensus is, is that Erica would have to be a very weak uh, wave to actually make it through the Florida Straits and into the gulf, at which point it might re-strengthen, but that would be a longer-term question if that were the case. But the only way it gets into the gulf, really, at this point, is if it's weak. If it's strengthening and healthy as it moves into the Bahamas, then it likely turns to the north earlier and moves either into Florida or east of Florida, paralleling the coast. And this is currently what the NHC track favors, a strengthening into a hurricane and turning to the north. Now, the exact track here along the coast of Florida should not be interpreted as a set-in-stone thing. This cone of uncertainty represents the area in which 
we usually expect the storm to be at this range. This represents the error on average, about a 250 mile track error is the average for the NHC forecast at days four and five. And so this general circle here is where we expect the storm to be based on current uh, knowledge of the forecast in the next five days. And so it could be over Florida or east of Florida, really the exact track is hard to pin down until it gets by the mountains of Hispaniola and forms a stacked center. But this shows the concern from the NHC that this begins to strengthen as it takes this turn toward the north, and that's because it's going to be in a much more favorable environment with warmer water, less wind shear, and there's really not that much dry air around for it to fight with once it gets into the Bahamas. And the concern in this pattern is that the United States is becoming more likely to get impacted by Erica in some form if the storm survives. This is the giant ridge forecast to form over New England on the GFS here by Tuesday, and this is where the GFS has Erica at that time. Now this is not a pattern that tends to direct uh, tropical storms out to sea. There's no giant trough here to turn Erica away. Um, really this ridge with this trough over East Texas here favors a northwest steering flow that can force Erica right into the southeast U.S. at some location. That being unknown if that were to occur. And a very slight deviation in track can mean a track into Florida or an entirely different state depending on very slight shifts to the right and left. Because it's paralleling Florida, there's a lot of possibilities here. So there's a lot of uh, small changes that can lead to large distances uh, and changes in landfall location. Now there is a way this still gets out to sea, and that's showcased by the uh, European, which has a weak storm over Florida, but if it was stronger, it would likely be offshore here on the Euro. This short wave over the Ohio Valley is not present as strongly on the GFS and other models, and if the European is right about this, it could set the edge of this ridge here off the Carolinas such that if Erica is a hurricane, it may still be able to turn away from Cape Hatteras and avoid everything and uh, move out to sea uh, at that point. But this solution is starting to look a little bit less likely today um, as models start to trend towards some kind of impact to the southeast U.S. if Erica is able to survive and strengthen. This kind of a pattern with all this ridging just doesn't lend itself to the United States escaping a landfall. So at this point, even though we're still four or five days out from any potential impacts, uh, it's worth starting to make sure you're prepared if you're in this area of the southeast U.S. and the eastern Gulf Coast. Make sure you have a plan in place in case the forecast comes your direction as we start to get more knowledge about Erica's future. Eventually, we will be able to pin down where Erica's going in a couple of days. As time goes on, we know more and more and we'll be more sure of things. Right now, if it does make landfall, we're not sure where exactly that might be. It could be any of these states on the southeast coastline, um, but uh, we are expecting some kind of a threat. This is going to be too close for comfort either way, and folks should be thinking about getting prepared for this. In addition, here's the uh, GFS upper level pattern showing, again, the trough over eastern Texas far enough back that it doesn't shear uh, Erica or force dry air into the circulation, meaning that in this pattern without flow jets to the east and northwest, this would be a very nice environment for the hurricane to strengthen, meaning that this could become a dangerous storm in a hurry if it manages to uh, realign itself in the Bahamas and get going. Once it starts intensifying, if it finally gets to that stage, it could become uh, a very quickly intensifying storm at that point. But we're still a ways out from that, very unsure. Based on the current short-term track near the mountains of Hispaniola, we'll determine the rest of Erica's future. It'll be a couple days before we know how the storm fares uh, due to all of this land interaction, but after it gets by Hispaniola, we'll probably have a good idea of what we're dealing with. Until that point, just keep a close monitor on it if you're living in this region here. Now quickly we'll look at the Pacific. Uh, this has been an unbelievable year so far uh, given all of the warm water in the North Pacific uh, near and south of Hawaii due to the positive PDO in the North Pacific and the El Nino, all of which uh, tends to warm the water in this region. We have uh, what was a kilo here, still is kilo, was a threat to Hawaii, no longer is. It's moving off to the west. The new threat to Hawaii is Ignacio, which we talked about yesterday, moving from the east-southeast toward uh, the general direction of the Big Island. Currently the trend in the track is toward the north. This is the current National Hurricane Center forecast, currently showing what would be a miss, but just like Erica, this is at days four and five, so the exact track uh, still uncertain and anywhere within this cone of uncertainty we might expect a storm and this still contains the islands so a landfall is not out of the question. 
but we talked about this bubble ridge to the west of the islands possibly deflecting Ignacio to the north or the south. Right now the model trend is a deflection to the north, so possibly a miss, which would be good news, but this is still several days out, plenty of time to monitor that system. And behind it, Jemina uh, will also be coming toward the west and could once again threaten Hawaii in the very long range. So a lot of, uh, a lot of threats from the tropics right now in this current pattern in the northern hemisphere for the United States as well as the islands of the Greater Antilles and the Bahamas, and still the Lesser Antilles tonight as flooding rains continue to move through the area. So we'll monitor Erica and the storms in the Pacific closely as time goes on. Stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center and Central Pacific Hurricane Center for constant updates on the system. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.